Hi everyone. I thought I'd take some time to discuss how Google has been trying hard to make using its Google Apps for Education products more useful for math teachers. Much of the time I hear that Google makes it too hard to input formulas, equations, graphs, etc. Luckily though, there are a number of tools that work alongside Google to hopefully change all that. Now while you may have things pre-created in Microsoft Word or as PDF files, creating worksheets in Google may help assist in a reduction in paper in your classroom or a reduction in time spent grading. We'll start off first by learning how to make math worksheets in Google Docs and then move on to how to make quizzes in Google Forms. Okay, as you can see we're logged into our Google Drive and we're going to start by creating a blank document. So we're going to go over here to New and then we're going to create Google Docs. So once it comes up, we're going to go ahead and give this document a name and we're going to call it Math Test Worksheet. Once we've done that, we can put our identifying subjects like name, and if we tab over a little bit, maybe period. Now let's go ahead and start adding some questions. I'm going to try to touch on as many types of questions as possible, but I'm sure there are many more out there. So don't feel like this is a, an exhaustive list of things that you can do um, on a Google Doc. Okay, first thing we'll cover is what happens if you already have worksheets as Microsoft Word or PDF files created somewhere else and you don't want to have to recreate certain parts of those worksheets. Well, good news is there's a pretty simple solution for that. First, I'll start up by uploading that already existing worksheet either from Word or a PDF file into my Google Drive. So if I go back to my Google Drive here, I'm going to go to New and then click on File Upload. And then somewhere on your computer you will find that worksheet either as a Microsoft Word file or a PDF file. So here I've already went ahead and uploaded the sample worksheet. And you can see by the symbol in front of the title that it's a PDF file. I'll go ahead and continue by opening up this file and you should when you click on the file get a preview view of something that looks like this. So say for instance this was a PDF file and this was a really good question that I had already made. Now I don't want to spend the time to go ahead and use Google Drawings to go ahead and recreate this question all over again what I can do is use this handy little extension up here called Awesome Screenshot to grab that and put it into my Google Doc. Now um, on the screen you'll also see um, how I went ahead and got this extension if you don't already have it. So Awesome Screenshot's pretty cool because I can click on it and it lives in my Chrome toolbar. Then I get a bunch of choices of what I want to do on the screen. So I'm going to capture a selected area of the screen. And this is the question that I want to put into my worksheet. And I'm going to highlight it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Capture. And what's nice is it's a little different than the snipping tool or the screen grab because what Awesome Screenshot allows me to do is annotate this picture. So say there were parts of the question that I wanted to highlight or maybe, you know, put a hint, you know, hint, remember, blank, and you, you know, you fill in the blank, okay? So that's why I like the functionality of Awesome Screenshot is because it allows you to do all that extra stuff, and there's no need to save it first uh, to your computer and then in insert a file. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit Done, and it gives me my final thing. Now I can, as you'll see, save it in my Google Drive for later, but I don't have to. Um, I can just grab it and come up here to the worksheet that I had started and hover over the tab and then I drag it back down and Google is able to put that directly into my worksheet. And then maybe I can just type in a little spot for students to go ahead and type their answers in. Now of course one of the most important things when we do math work is to show your work um, that maybe the the final answer isn't all that we're looking for. 
So while it might be hard for students to show their work on their worksheet, the students can still use traditional pencil and paper to show their work, but they can put their final answer on the worksheet and submit that. So that at least you have a record um, ahead of time of what um, questions students might have got right or wrong. And then if you start seeing uh, the same answers uh, repeatedly coming up wrong, you can meet in conference with that student and take a look at the work that they had for that particular problem. But you don't have to wait until the student comes in um, with the final answer to know if you even need to look at their work in the first place. So that's clearly the easiest way to go ahead and use things that you already had created either in Microsoft Word or as PDF files to go ahead and start transitioning those worksheets into Google Worksheets. Now what we're going to transition to now is making fresh worksheets in Google Docs using a third party add-on and we'll go ahead and start with probably the most useful add-on called GMath. Now you might be wondering first of all what the heck is an add-on? An add-on is a little mini program that works in conjunction with uh, Google products that other people write so that it gives Google products extra functionality. So as we said, we're going to go ahead and use the GMath add-on. So to get to that, up on the toolbar you'll notice that one of the uh, menu buttons is called add-ons. You're going to click on that. And If you don't have GMath already uh, installed, and my guess is many of you don't, you're going to click on Get Add-ons. All you have to do is type in GMath and what you should see is this add-on right here. And this is a great add-on um, by John McGowan, and we'll go ahead and walk you through how to use GMath to create uh, fresh worksheets. So here, it's already installed on my Google Drive, but instead, you'll see a blue button. It might say free. You click on it, and you'll install it. Then the next time that you click on add-ons, it will add it to your list of pre-installed uh, programs to use. So let's go ahead now and walk uh, through some of the features that GMath has uh, now that you've installed um, that add-on onto your Google Doc. So if we click on add-ons, we'll see that now it's installed and there's three main features that GMath has. Create math expressions, create a graph, or create a statistical display. And we're going to go ahead and start with creating a math expression. So we click on that and you'll notice that a little sidebar from the right comes up. So then you might also see that as a default there's always a uh, default equation or expression I should say already put in there for you. Now no matter what program you use whether it's Microsoft Word, whether it's Google's Equation Editor, whether it's Math Type, in order for a computer to format your formula the right way, it needs to put it in a specific coding language called LaTeX. Now you don't need to know how to type in LaTeX in order to make equations and formulas. GMath does a lot of the work for you. It has a lot of pre-built in um, expressions um, and symbols that you might want to use to go ahead and create your formulas. It's even got some pretty complex ones as you scroll down. If for some reason GMath doesn't have already uh, pre-made buttons or formulas for equations and formulas that you might use uh, for your worksheets or for your classroom, there is another option that you can go with um, and that option is a website called DOM Equation Editor. DOM also comes as a Chrome app which is pretty much just a shortcut um, to the website, you can just type in DOM Equation Editor into Google or if you open a new tab on the left here you click on Apps and you can search in the web store for DOM Equation Editor and here I went ahead and installed it already and again it's just pretty much a shortcut to that particular website. So here is what the website looks like and you'll notice that it has a lot more choices than what GMath offers so if you find something that's not in GMath, you can go ahead and check out DOM Equation Editor as well. And what's nice about DOM Equation Editor is that you can save it straight to your Google Drive. Anything you type or create can automatically be put into uh, your Google Drive. 
What's also nice is here we have the quadratic formula. And as I was creating this formula here, it generates down here the latex code for that. So if you go ahead and create something, you can just copy this latex code down on the bottom, come back to your um, worksheet, and then just copy and paste it where it says enter latex. And then you will also get the preview of what you typed in down here. And then all you would do is hit the insert button. So let's go ahead and show you an example. And let's go ahead and say solve for x. And here I want them to solve for x using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to click on the quadratic formula and here you'll see that it puts it up here in the latex version and then it also gives you the preview of what it's going to look like. But I can also go ahead and scroll on the bottom here and hit new line. Alright, so it put the little uh, backslashes in there. And I can say A equals 4, B equals 2, C equals 5. All right. So now on the bottom here, you have everything that's nicely condensed um, for you. So here then, once I'm done, I can hit insert. And it'll think a little bit. And then it puts it right into your, uh, your worksheet. Now, let's say I accidentally put the wrong numbers in here for A, B, and C, or maybe I wanted to copy it uh, for another problem with different numbers. I can click on what I inputted, go back to GMath, and click on the button that says Edit from Doc. And I can go ahead and change these numbers to whatever I want. So maybe this is a 6 instead, and then maybe this is a 4 instead. And then if I go back to Insert, it'll go ahead and place that new edited version uh, of that equation into my worksheet. The next part of GMath that we'll cover is the second feature. If we click on add-ons, go back to GMath, is creating a graph. So again, you'll see the little um, insert menu, and you're able to input any number of functions uh, for GMath to insert into the worksheet for you. So if we start really simple, and we typed in an equation in here, and we put y equals 2x minus 4, and then we hit insert. It might take a second or two for it to be inputted, but what you'll see here is that it goes ahead and puts that graph into your worksheet for you. And just like we did previously, you can edit it in case you need to change um, any of the numbers that you uh, input. It also does have some mathematical constants and functions uh, for you to do. But what's also nice is you can come back up here and also set the, the zoom region of your graph. So if you are graphing something that you know only lands in one quadrant, you can go ahead and zoom in on just that quadrant. So that makes it a little, uh, a little easier and a little bit more visible um, for the students. Another couple interesting features um, in the second option of G math is the option to just a plot uh, a series of points. So say for instance you're doing statistics and you want to do scatter plot graphs where you're just going to be plotting random points um, on a coordinate system. So you can go ahead and just enter all of your points in there in the format that it gives you uh, in the instructions. You also then have the option to have the graph have a line of best fit associated with it as well as some other choices that you can go ahead and read about. What's also nice is that if you were to create a simple table uh, of data on your worksheet, and say for instance I put a table in here, and of course you can resize this any way you want, and I put in a couple of data points. And let's just go ahead and add another row. And we'll put 3 and 8. If I go ahead and select these data points, and then I click Get Data from Table, or Get Points from Table, you'll see that it already knew all that data from there. So if I already created one of those tables, then I could hit Insert, and then it will go ahead and insert the graph based on the points that I selected. Uh, from my table. The last part of GMath we'll cover is the third feature 
If we go back here up to add-ons and select create a statistical display. Now this is probably for your higher level math classes, but when you click on it, you'll notice that you can make histograms, bar charts, or box and whisker plots. Now you can get data from a table just like we did previously. So if you have data points already in a table on your worksheet, you can go ahead and grab those and it will insert them into the um, box up above, or you can enter your data manually. So if we were just to pick some random data points, and then we were to give it a title, maybe we'll call it hours spent watching TV. And if I hit preview, here's what the histogram looks like. Here's what the bar chart looks like. And again, it might take a couple seconds uh, for it to calculate. And then here is what the box and whisker plot looks like. And again, once I'm satisfied with it, I can just hit the insert button. You will see um, your graph appear on the screen and there it is right there. So those are pretty much the basics of the GMath add-on for Google Docs. And you can start to see how useful creating worksheets inside Google Docs can be, not only for reducing uh, paperwork uh, in your classroom, but what's also nice is that if this worksheet is already shared between you and the student, you can kind of get a, a sense beforehand what they're understanding and what they're not understanding based on the answers that they're putting into that worksheet. Um, you could also share um, different differentiated worksheets among groups uh, and have them collaborate on certain problems together. Now, the one issue that a lot of math teachers also bring up is the issue of putting or having students show their work uh, as they're working on a particular problem because that's really what most, most math teachers are really looking for is, is the steps. So students can uh, show their work using traditional pencil and paper and take pictures of their work and just insert those pictures uh, straight into the worksheet. That's one option. Or if you as the teacher are just looking at the answers, you can see which students um, are, are not understanding the, the concepts, and we talked about this, this earlier, and then ask them to show you their traditional pencil and paperwork um, as you conference with them to try to get to the bottom of how they got that answer by looking at their work. So there still might be a, um, you know, a place for traditional pencil and paper, but a lot of that um, could be gotten rid of um, using worksheets that are created in Google Docs. Now the next thing we'll cover is the creation of um, math quizzes using Google Forms using the same add-on GMath. Uh, so feel free to go ahead and watch that video and see how you can create self-grading quizzes using GMath.